So our next speaker is Professor Renaud Menard, um, who's going to give a talk on calf and bilateral disorders, evaluating corresponding and the correspondence between ultrasound images, abdominal palpation, and subsequent surgical observations. And I think we also, from the original talk, um, how prolific the amount of information on ruminant imaging <laughs> has been. Thank you, Mrs. Chairwoman. Um, good morning, everybody. Firstly, I would like to thank the organizing committee for the invitation. And uh, I would like to thank uh, especially uh, Nora Sesbron, our colleague in Nantes, because this is a, a co-work between Toulouse and Nantes. Uh, or both located in France. Yes, a classical plan. I will be brief because I have only 12 minutes and I will go back at the end of this session. So if you have other questions or information, I will give you at this moment. Okay, we are going to deal with umbilical disorders and as you all know, the umbilical disorder are the consequences of the embryonic and then fetal blood circulation. As you see in this graph, the structures of interest are the umbilical vein driving blood to the liver and the vena cava, and backwards, the two arteries and the erecus duct. This is normal circulation, and normally, within a few weeks after, or a few days after the birth, this structure became, became atretic, and normally, there is no problem. But normally there is no problem. You have to check and to measure the atriatic structures in order to check they are not infected and there is no trouble in the calf. It is part of the work and we are not uh, alone to have performed this work. Uh, previous work have measured all structures of the, the umbilic or of the navel at different edges of the, the calf. So what did we want to, to see in pathological condition? What do we want not to see, of course, for the calf, but to see as ultrasonographist? You have here different structures, external structures, like umbilical abscesses or subcutaneous abscesses, and internal structures, pathological structures, front in the front of the liver, the umbilical vein with abscesses and backwards, abscesses of the urecus or the arteries. Okay, so it's the, something we have to check. You have also to check non-inflammatory lesions such as hernias and ultrasonography is very useful in this indication. <coughs> As you all know, the umbilical disorders are the third neonatal affection in calves with pneumonia, enteritis, and so on. They have a great impact as medical, in economical, and welfare topics. And the difficulty, the main difficulty before surgery is to be sure of the diagnosis and of the prognosis. Some of these lesions, like um, abscesses of the vein, penetrating the liver are of very poor prognosis, and you all know that. Well, questions and goals of our study, of our preliminary study we performed during the last trimester of year 2014. Oh, sorry. What is the real interest of ultrasonography in umbilical disorders? Because all practitioners, at least in France, at least in the southwest part of France, say, why to perform ultrasonography? Because in all cases, we perform surgery. Okay? So, so the, main question, the main question to uh, consider is, is there a real interest to lose time to get the, the device on farm and so on before surgery? Professor Koffler already mentioned the, the, the two books with um, Sebastian Mugzeski as uh, editor, and the question he wrote was, were good questions. We need more studies on the diagnosis and prognostic use of ultrasound in ruminants, and overall, you must validate ultrasonography for detection of disease. And it is what we did, not comparing them with other testing option, but with umbilical disorder with surgery, and 
in the, my last presentation in this session, you, you will consider, I will consider uh, comparing ultrasound with necroscopic finding in cows uh, suffering and euthanized for reticuloperitonitis. Okay? Well, we uh, not really choose, but we had about 36 uh, Holstein calves, most of them females, and most of them younger than two months old. It is, this is important because we wanted to compare ultrasonography to deep abdominal palpation. And when calves get older, you know that it is impossible to, uh, to get a proper deep palpation of the abdomen. For all of these 36 uh, female cows, we performed complete standard clinical examination with a trained teacher and a trained student, abdominal palpation, and then ultrasonography, and then surgery. And we compared essentially the last third parameters, palpation, ultrasonography, surgery. How did we uh, do this? We needed a calf standing, not lying if possible, uh, because essentially in the diagnosis of hernia, we need the calf to be uh, standing. Naval palpation, abdominal wall palpation, and then deal palpation, two hands backwards, forwards. That is a classical examination. After this first step, the clinician had to be able to, to say it was only external and simple fibrosis, fibrosis sorry, without any inflammatory or infectious disease. A simple omphalitis, only infection of the external part of the navel. An external abscess with a particular structure of a, an abscess, but all, always external, sorry. Hernia or infectious and inflammatory uh, lesion of the veins the artery of the, or the uracus, okay? The devices you, we used were uh, two sorts of them, but there is no difference. We do prefer in this study uh, convex probes because we, wa we wanted to see the entry of the vein in the liver and we wanted to see the arteries in the part, in uh, the left and right parts of the bladder, the urine bladder. And it is not very possible in all calves, especially in older calves, when you use rectal uh, probes. But we, we did it in another study. We tried to perform nine pictures, nine uh, photographs per calf. We, there is no standardized protocol for ultrasonography of the embolic, at least in France. But we performed nine images three of them around the navel, four to the bladder, and we had to see the bladder for the reasons I, I, told, I will tell you later, two about on the liver and one at the entry of the vein in the liver. We always do this, of course, in the right side to see the liver. Okay, there is the, the, the surgery wa was then performed, not by me, because as a surgeon, I have two left hands and ten thumbs. <laughs> the surgery was systematic. It was uh, um, for the inclusion in the study. Uh, the surgery was completed with the complete uh, inspection of the abdominal cavity and, of course, of a post-surgery examination of anatomic mole parts to measure them and to compare them to what we have seen and measured in ultrasonography. The calculation we did then was, of course, sensitivity, specificity, positive and negative value, because we had the idea to make sense to the usefulness of ultrasonography. Uh, a few examples in images to, before going to the results. Uh, here you have various images of normal uh, adverse uh, umbilic navels. Okay. Here you have an uracus and a fibrosis and the departure of the uracus in normal uh, condition calves. Here you have the uracus in uh, and the enlarged uracus in a three-week-old calf. And then 
you have a few images of pathologic conditions, umbilical vein, and the umbilical vein here and the uh, post-surgery anatomical part. Here, once again, a structure abscessed and compartmented left, non-compartmented right. Here, a compartmented abscess of the umbilical vein, and so on. Here, the two arteries and the urine bladder you have seen. Okay, and here, an arterial abscess, which is uncommon compared to uh, abscesses of the vein or the uracus. And to end this example, images of the uracus. And as you, as you see here, very rarely, very uncommonly, the uracus communicates with the bladder, and fortunately for the calf. Okay, so what are the results of the, what we did? About fibrosis and hernia, we were, I suppose, excellent, and Nora Sesbron was excellent too with uh, my student, because I, all values were, ex were excellent in fibrosis, that's to say external, non-inflammatory, non-infectious uh, umbilical disorder. In hernia, we were almost quite perfect. And what, is, what was more interesting for us was the result, were the result for uh, internal uh, umbilical disorders. In case of simple omphalitis, as you see, ultrasonography allowed us to be quite perfect comparing with palpation. In case of omphaloflebitis, that's to say infection of the uh, umbilical vein dry to the liver, we had two sorry, excellent results and sensitivity, specificity, positive and negative posi predictive values of one. And in cases of uh, on arteritis or urachitis, we had almost the same results. In conclusion of these results, not the conclusion and discussion of this study, we had excellent correspondence between palpation, palpation and ultrasonography. But as you see, in one case on five, the ultrasonography was improving the diagnosis. That's important, and that's what said Professor Koeffler. What, well, what was the information supplied by ultrasonography? For us, the extension of infection, I told you the two main points for me are the entry, the, the entrance of the uh, vein in the liver, yes or no. If yes, the prognosis will be very poor. The liver damage, because you can face two uh, abscesses in the liver. Oh, sorry. You can also, when you have a convex probe, see the damages of the urine bladder, if they exist. And you have also an idea of the number of structures involved. It is difficult, even with a trained practitioner, even when you uh, used to uh, practice deep palpation in calves, to to guess sometimes that you have more than one structure involved and you stop at one and you start surgery to discover in uncommon cases that you have one or two uh, structures involved. What can we discuss? The number, of course. No standardization, at least in French condition. The use of scanners different than those routinely used in the field. And Professor Koffler said, and we use them too, that rectal probes are useful. And I told you too that if you want to see completely the liver and the uh, arteries and the urine bladder, in my opinion, you have also to use converse probes. Discussion, positive discussion <coughs> with a trained student, uh, a trained uh, vet, you have useful results in less than 10 minutes. And as always, the experience is gained rapidly when you practice more and more. You have a ultrasonographic device, use it, and you will be better each day, okay? In conclusion, it is ready to use, easy to use. It is a necessary complement in case of umbilical disorder, in our opinion. It is a really add value for the diagnosis. And if in some cases, and a lot of cases, 
It is a beneficiation for the veterinary consultation, and you can give, before surgery, an idea of the prognosis to the farmer. Very often, farmers love diagnostic, but in some times, and very often, we must confess, they prefer prognosis. And the prognosis before surgery, in our opinion, will be given only using ultrasonography. Well, it's time to, to thank all my students and, as you see, to thank my boss. Thank you for our attention, too. So are there any questions? Well, I have one in terms of, I know you spoke about the difference between using the um, array transducer and the normal rectal probe that people would have, but there is obviously a cost implication for having that, and most general practitioners wouldn't have one. Have you done much work with just using the rectal probe and comparing how specific that is? Yes. Uh, the, the work is ongoing. Uh, we use um, a rectal probe with a Draminsky device, another one. Mm -hmm. It is very useful, but you, you, we need calves younger than two months. Okay. If not, we don't see all the vein structure to the liver <coughs> or the arteries uh, flanking the, the urine bladder. Mm -hmm. But their palpation also wouldn't be as good at that stage. No, at that stage, yes. so, so would you still rank it as higher than just for a patient alone, but maybe not as good as the, the results in this? Yes. Okay. Stand up and shout. Oh, no. The microphone is arriving. Yeah. <laughs> from Berlin. Just, in case of uh, liver abscess, we had good experience with uh, marginalization. Um, in some cases, just uh, do you agree with this? As I said, I am not a surgeon, but you, you will ask this to Nora. She will speak <laughs> in uh, 30 minutes about, and she will answer because I am not a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Miyazaki from Japan. Uh, I'd like to know about the probe type. If you use a like, convex or linear, or how, what frequency is the best for to, to diagnose uh, this kind of... In this study, yes. convex and the frequency 3.5 to 5. Are there any other questions? <laughs> well, I would like to thank uh, Professor Alar very much for an excellent talk. <laughs> <And you're> back. <laughs>